continue talking about um, about animation with keyframes in CSS. Uh, here I have an animation of a bouncing ball. This is actually the classic animation exercise, right? Is creating the bouncing ball, right? For traditional animation, and we can we can do that here with CSS. So um, let's let's try this out and um, see how you would how you would create this, right? I'm gonna. Um, just delete all this and start over again, right? I'll just leave my my box class and my keyframe block, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set, and actually like if I save that, you know, now we don't have anything, right? So let's do this. Let's say width of 100 pixels, height of 100 pixels, um, border radius of 50%. So now we have a circle. We'll give it a background color of our favorite color, which is tomato. And then um, I guess that's all we really need to do there. And now let's set up our animation. So I have two extremes. I have the position here. We'll call that zero. And then down here, like that's about 300 pixels. So let's say at 0% along the length of the animation, we're going to do a transform uh, translate and translate takes two parameters it's an x and a y so i'm not going to move horizontally so x will be zero and the y value will be zero also because this will be the extreme where we're at the top of the bounce okay and uh, then we'll set up a keyframe here and this will be transform um, translate and we're not moving on the X, but we are going to move on the Y. So I'll set X to zero and I'll set um, the Y translate to 300 pixels, right? And then we'll apply this animation to our box. So I'll set the uh, animation uh, name to bounce. And then I'll set the animation duration to, I don't know, how about uh, one second, right? And we can adjust that to taste. And then uh, maybe I want to bounce forever, so I'll say animation um, iteration count will be infinite. And this is what we have here. So what is happening here is every time we get to the end of the animation, we, you know, um, CSS checks the iteration count and says, oh, well, you know, you, you want to animate forever. So I'm going to start over again at zero. So we get to here 300 pixels and then the computer starts at zero, right? And then we, we end up at zero pixels. So it's at the top and it goes down. But what I want is I want it to go back up again. And we could like kind of bake that into the animation here, making it hit the bottom at maybe 50% and then make it bounce up to the top again at 100. So 100 would be 0y, right? And in the middle here at 50%, we would have um, 300 pixels. And that might be good for some animations, depending on what you're doing. But, but um, you, you know, and that might be better for some circumstances. But right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another property called animation direction. Um, here it is, right? And animation direction gives us a couple properties. It gives us... Um, alternate, alternate, reverse, normal, and reverse. So reverse plays the animation backwards. Normal um, goes forward, right? And then alternate, um, alternates playing the animation forward and backward. I'm going to choose this one. If we do reverse, I think it starts at 100% and goes to zero and then goes back up to 100, right? So I'll start here and then now we'll see what it looks like. Oh, so that's looking pretty good, but it doesn't really look like it's bouncing. Let's give it a little bit of margin to, to push it away from the edges there. Let's do a uh, two rem there, right? So that doesn't look too bad, but it's kind of like it's slowing down at the bottom and slowing down at the top, and that doesn't really look like a bounce, right? So there's a concept here called ease in and ease out. So if we think about that, it's like things speed up and slow down as they move, right, in real life, you know? Um, think about gravity. Like if you drop something, gravity pulls it, and it's constantly pulling, so the thing speeds up as it falls down. It gets faster and faster, 
as it falls, right? So if we drop a ball here, it should just it should be speeding up until it hits the bottom. So it should be going fastest when it hits the bottom, and then it should be going fastest as it bounces up and slowing down as gravity pulls on it as it bounces up. And when it reaches the top of the arc, it should come to a stop and then start falling again, right? So it should go faster going down and slower going up. Okay, so what we need to, to do there is, is timing function. So I'm gonna choose animation um, timing function, here we are, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna do ease in, right? Because ease in means speed up, ease out means slow down, okay? And if you do ease in out, it means speed up and slow down. And that's not quite right here. Um, it would be right though if we put the the 300 pixels at the 50% thing. So we could speed up here, you know, go fastest in the middle and then slow down at the end. But but the way we have this set up, we're gonna just do it with ease in, right? So now let's see what changes that makes, right? So that's actually looking a lot better you know, it has a, a feel for a bounce, right? Um, so that's pretty good. And we can play around with this even more um, using a custom easing curve. So I'm going to go back to this tool here, uh, Caesar's CSS easing animation tool, right? And there's a bunch of um, different, uh, you know, easing set up here. So this is like the linear ease straight line. This is the default ease. So this is why it kind of looks like it at first, like it was kind of speeding up and slowing down, right? You can do ease in. This is the one we're using now, but I feel like we need a little stronger ease, right? A little stronger easing in. So maybe kind of like this, right? There's another handle here. Maybe something like that, right? So I'll, I'll take this, right? So now we're going to start off slow and then we're going to speed up and go faster and faster as we get and, you know, as we move forward in time. And, you know, they have a couple uh, snippets of code here. I'm just going to grab just this line right here, cubic Bezier with these numbers, right? And then I'll trade in the ease in for, for that um, cubic Bezier function, right? And let's see what it looks like. Um, so this is what we had before, and that's pretty good. Not bad. I feel like it's a little better, but a little too fast at the bottom, right? So I'll leave that for you to um, to work with. Maybe um, maybe I'll tinker with this a little bit. Maybe if we ease off just a little bit like that, right? But I'll leave that for you to experiment with. But um, you know, a little bit of trial and error, and I think you could get like a really great looking bounce, right? I'm gonna try one more time. Let's see if I did a better job this time. That's not too bad, right? So anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope that that is useful for you um, and uh, see you later.